More Labour MPs resign to back Boris. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn's election crisis continues as he loses more candidates and will travel to Sutton in Surrey to speak to the candidates and the voters. Now before we start, keep watching to the end of this video because uh, we have a, a very interesting segment coming up for you uh, about our uh, journey to Sutton in Surrey where we spoke to voters and uh, the candidates. Now it hasn't been a great start for most political parties including the Conservatives in this election who made a lot of mistakes but the Labour Party are going through an actual crisis. Uh, firstly, they, uh, they've had a couple of, uh, a number of uh, former Labour MPs uh, starting a public movement against Corbyn's leadership and uh, they've said uh, that pe people should back Boris Johnson. Uh, this includes Ian Austin and John Woodcock but today we have a new addition to that group uh, that's Gisela Stewart. Gisela Stewart who was the chair of the Vote Leave campaign but she was always a loyal Labour politician and Labour supporter but is now completely fed up with uh, Corbyn's leadership and the way the Labour Party are running things. Uh, she has now urged people to back the Conservative Party. Gisela Stewart is one of the three former Labour MPs to urge voters to back Boris Johnson in the next general election this week. As the former uh, chair of the Vote Leave campaign, she's claimed that the Conservative Party leader is the only viable option for people wanting to leave the EU. Now that's not the only problem that Jeremy Corbyn has. He's uh, currently, as, as far as I know, I'm trying to keep count, but I think just over six or seven uh, candidates had to quit because of uh, very inappropriate comments that they've been making and I, I can't really talk about that on this channel because it's been quite disgusting basically uh, against uh, minorities and uh, everybody else uh, so that's kind of uh, the, the trend that the Labour Party have they started with the Jewish community and now they're going after everybody else so they're, they're losing more candidates and it's I don't know what's going to be happening in this party but I don't think uh, they are fit for government now we have some footage of Labour activists uh, campaigning in an area and uh, a, a Brexit uh, voter comes out and uh, this happens. Should be ashamed denying everyone democracy. We voted to leave. We voted to leave the EU. So what are you doing canvassing for people to try and vote for you, to try and rally up vote? Don't come on my drive. I'm a Brexiteer. Okay. I'm a Brexiteer. So don't come on my drive. I just don't get how you've got the audacity to knock on people's doors and ask them to vote for you. We voted to leave. And you're going against the will of 52% of the country? That was three years ago. No. I don't care. You haven't even implemented the first result. So how the hell are you meant to get... Why are we going to vote for you when you haven't even implemented the first result? Now, the best moment was the, the bit where she said, uh, we voted leave. And then the, the Labour uh, activist says, yeah, but that was three years ago. Yeah. We haven't even implemented Brexit yet. But three years ago is a long time ago. So... Yeah, forget about it. This is why when you look at the polls, you see that the Conservatives are uh, still going up and increasing their support and other parties are going down. Although, if you look at the Labour Party, they're slightly going up as well because they're getting the Lib Dem support because the Lib Dems have gone completely mental with the new policy to revoke Article 50. It's so bad that even certain Remainers are thinking, yeah, this is too much. We would rather have Jeremy Corbyn which is quite dangerous than revoking, revoking Article 50. Now, uh, let's talk about fake news and uh, fact-checking because Labour have gone around, John McDonnell, the Shadow Chancellor, has been going around lying again. Uh, the, they know that one of the uh, biggest uh, block votes for the Tories are the, the pensioners. And uh, so every now and then the Labour Party start rumours about how the Conservatives are going to destroy the pensioners' lives. This time, John McDonnell has been going around saying that uh, they, they, the Tories want to increase their pension age to, what, 75 or something? John McDonnell repeats misleading claim about the Conservative pension age plan. In a speech today, this was yesterday, Labour Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell said that the Conservatives' ambition is a state uh, pension age of 75. This is not a current Conservative Party policy and um, this is the independent fact-checking charity that have done some uh, uh, checking to see what the actual truth is. They say that the recommendation that the state pension age uh, to be increased uh, to 75 by 2035 was made by the Center for Social Justice in a report published in August. The Center for Social Justice is a think tank uh, that uh, first proposed uh, universal credit and is obviously chaired by Ian Duncan Smith. 
but it's not the government. This recommendation has not been adopted by the Conservative Party. In August, we spoke to the Department for Work and Pensions, which told us uh, that it wasn't government policy to do this. Now, we're going to have a lot of fake news going around in this election, especially from the Labour side and the Lib Dem side. So we're going to be doing fact checking and we're going to keep you informed. Now, as we mentioned at the beginning of the video, we uh, travelled uh, earlier today to Sutton in Surrey uh, to speak to different parties and the voters. We uh, managed to find the Conservatives. They've been out campaigning all day. And uh, but it, yeah, it, it was it was a kind of interesting because uh, certain other parties try, basically decided to hide from us. Uh, and yeah, so just so just watch the next um, segment of this uh, show. And yeah, it's quite interesting. Right, so we're in Sutton today uh, and with uh, the Conservative candidate, Paul Scully. Uh, so, Paul, how's the campaign going? How's everything going here? Yes, really good. Uh, we are just getting all our leaflets prepared to um, to uh, start delivering. Mm -hmm. We were knocking on doors, getting a good response so far. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're rocking and rolling, really. Mm -hmm. So you've been in MP since 2015. And this was a, I mean, this was, a, as I believe, a, during the 80s and Thatcher uh, era, it was a Conservative safe seat and then it became... Uh, kind of Lib Dem since Tony Blair came. 18 years of Lib Dem yeah. for then, 97. Then you got it back in 2015. That's right, that's right. And then won again in uh, 2017 with a bigger margin. Uh, although the irony is, I think if, if I managed to get through this, and mm -hmm. that'd be my third election within uh, just four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, my predecessor managed uh, four elections successes in 18 years. So it shows uh, mm -hmm. how Constantine politics has become yeah. at the moment. Uh, this was a 53% leave area, I believe. Uh, how's it looking now? Yeah, so it, st it still is. It still is. People just want to get Brexit done. Um, you know, Brexit is not one of these things that's 52, mm -hmm. just want to leave uh, mm -hmm. whatever, and 48, just want to remain whatever. Mm -hmm. So out of the 48%, there's loads of people now that, that believe in democracy, mm -hmm. that actually believe that, mm -hmm. um, okay, fine, they wanted to remain because they made a, um, you know, a toss of a coin in some way, some considered opinions, but it just... Uh, um, thought on balance it was better to remain but now the country vote to leave they're happy to leave and similar with the leavers you know some of some people want to leave with no deal other people are happy with the deal but the vast majority of people want to get stuff done so that we can talk about the domestic agenda and get the benefits of leaving the eu Right, so in terms of, uh, do you have any kind of Brexit party candidates standing, or do you know what's happening there? Or? There are Brexit candidates that are, um, uh, that have been out campaigning, that have been doing things, but whether they actually put their nominations in, we have yet to see, we've got another week to go, and I would hope that actually, if they look at mm -hmm. what the reality is, they mm -hmm. would think, you know what, we've got two Brexiteers in this borough, mm -hmm. Um, and the and two Lib Dem candidates. Mm -hmm. So the risk is that they get the exact opposite of what they want by letting those Lib Dems who just want to revoke Article mm -hmm. 50 in. Right, and uh, have you been a good local MP? Or? <laughs> well, you'll have to ask others that. There's 70 <laughs> other thousand, 70,000 people on my interview panel sit in the opposite side of the desk to me. But you know what? Um, we have some local issues here. The biggest issue that we've had mm -hmm. is talking about our local hospital, St. Helier Hospital. Mm -hmm. And for years it's been used as political football mm -hmm. when the Lib Dems and other people have been saying, save St. Helier, save mm -hmm. St. Helier. Most of the time it's not be actually been under da in danger. Mm -hmm. But they've not bothered answering mm. the question that they've asked themselves. How do you save it? Mm. In the last four years, I've managed to work with the chief exec of the local mm -hmm. hospital trust. We've now got record investment. We've got £100 million that's already started going into St. Helier mm -hmm. to refurbish it. And we've got half a billion pounds mm -hmm. from Matt Hancock and, the, and this Conservative government mm -hmm. to build a brand new hospital facility mm -hmm. here in Sutton, which is great news for the people here. Oh, brilliant. Well, let's see how it goes. And uh, actually, we're going to go out there and now uh, speak to the voters and see... Uh, how they're feeling and what they're going to be doing in this election. So keep watching. How's, how's it looking? Is everyone kind of uh, angry? Um, or... <laughs> I don't know. I don't think they're angry enough, quite honestly. And I think we need to get Tom Brake out of Sutton yeah. and Wallington and 
we've got to just do our best to do it. His majority was vastly reduced last time, and I'm just hoping it goes the same way. As long as nobody opens their mouth and says something stupid, as they are prone to do in the run-up to elections. Oh, it's going to happen a lot, this election. Everyone's going to say stupid. Well, <laughs> they were saying on the radio this morning, or television this morning, that hopefully at this stage it won't matter too much because it's too early in the campaign. By the time the election comes around, people will have forgotten. But I don't think people forget that quickly, unfortunately. Yeah, well, I before. think people have been very frustrated at Parliament. And um, what's been happening in Parliament, they feel very let down and feel that uh, democracy is being ripped away from them and that everyone who's a Remainer has just been putting the, uh, the stick in the spokes to try and derail things. I, I have to admit that I actually voted Remain and I'll tell you why, because I've got two sons who are daggers drawn over this and my younger son put forward a slightly more convincing argument but... Is that your favourite son? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, no, he's a hipster. <laughs> he lives in Hackney and he goes with the flow in Hackney. But um, since all of this hoo ha, I've come over to the other side because I'm just disgusted at the way everybody's behaving. And when you actually get into the nitty gritty of what's involved in the EU, you can't possibly want to stay there. This is our one and only opportunity to actually leave. So if we don't take it now, that will be it. We'll be locked into the EU forever, forevermore. We've got to take this opportunity to get out now. There, a lot of people say why are Brexit is kicking off all the time. It's because it, it, every referendum has happened across the Europe, whether it was Ireland or anywhere else or Greece. They always overturned it, and this is why everyone's worried because you know. What if it doesn't happen? So we have to make sure it happens now. Otherwise, as you said, it's never going to happen. The Lisbon Treaty, you know, they uh, we had one result and then they we didn't get through. So they changed the terms of it. Didn't have a a, a referendum or a vote on it. And they wouldn't let Ireland leave. They wouldn't let Ireland. And the same with uh, the Dutch, I believe. And yeah, this is the this is the pattern that they have. They just try and lock you into into it for as long as possible, so you don't ever want to leave. But. Uh, so as you've seen, we've been out in Sutton today and we've spoken to, we found the Conservatives, they've been out campaigning all day. Uh, there's no sign of the Brexit party here. And uh, we tried to speak to Labour and the Liberal Democrats, but they refused to uh, be interviewed and they've been hiding in their offices. So unfortunately that wasn't possible. So, and uh, But we've spoken to a lot of voters and uh, uh, residents here and they they have this feeling that because it's a very close area between the Lib Dems and the Tories, uh, everyone's really afraid of uh, Jeremy Corbyn. So regardless of if they voted uh, Remain or uh, Brexit, uh, they are thinking about uh, changing their votes, even if they used to vote Labour or uh, Liberal Democrats. So we'll see how it goes. And tomorrow we'll be uh, in Essex. Uh, we're going towards um, Dagenham and Raynham uh, and Romford. So we'll report from there uh, when we get there and then uh, see. let's see if we could meet the, the opposition and the Remainers. Now, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be going around the country throughout this election. And if you, the best way to find out where I'm going to be is if you follow me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'll keep you posted exactly uh, where I'm going to be and what time. If you want to come and say hi, like the, the people you saw in the video. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to go to Romford, but also Dagenham and Raynham in Essex. Uh, so I'll uh, post the exact time and location later tonight and early uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, so if you want to uh, stay up to date, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click on the bell next to it so you get notified when I release the new video. And after a lot of requests from you guys, we have a, a new t-shirt design uh, which also includes uh, other merchandise like uh, mugs and bags and everything else. We have the All I Want For Christmas Is Brexit t-shirts. Uh, that, as I said, uh, if you have any design ideas, uh, let me know in the comment section and we could make that happen for you. Uh, if you want to check out all the other designs, uh, the link is in the description. Make sure you get your uh, Brexit Christmas t-shirts. Uh, we're going to also make um, kind of jumpers and hoodies and everything else because it's getting quite cold. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, well, for now, I'm Maya Tusi and I'll see you tomorrow with a new video.